Thank you all very much. It's been a busy day, and the coffee breaks are obviously moments of great interaction. Uh, we're very honored to be welcoming today the State Secretary to the Foreign Minister, uh, Johanna Sumovori. Uh, she's a busy woman these days. Finland's a busy country these days. Uh, uh, and we're delighted that she was able to join us. Uh, it's a historic moment for Finland, obviously. Um, when I was about 20, my parents came to live in Finland, and uh, in those years, there was a bifurcation in many ways between it in its identity. It was moving towards the West very fast economically, but diplomatically it was equidistant, uh, or seemed equidistant at the time. But a succession of visionary Finns guided the country towards its European Union membership in 1995, am I right? Uh, and that was, I think, a decisive moment for Finland. It was very warmly welcomed in the European Union. And uh, ever since, it's played a significant role and always a positive role in the European Union. Um, now, um, I should remind you all that uh, not just does Finland host uh, wider, but it also, with uh, two other actors uh, playing a, a less important role, provided the significant financial endowment of wider. And so we're extremely grateful for that since it's what allows wider to do in-depth research, the income from that uh, endowment. Um, and uh, of the state secretary, um, she's been very active in politics in this country, but she took a three-year break, I believe, to go and live in London as press councillor in the embassy there. Uh, she's been a city councillor uh, and uh, she's obviously also uh, a parliamentary uh, figure. We're very grateful that you've joined us, State Secretary, today at such a busy time for the country uh, with a historic vote. And uh, you're most welcome now on the podium. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you very much. I, I hope you can hear me. And uh, uh, greetings, warm greetings from my minister, Pekka Havista, who is, for obvious reasons, now uh, very busy uh, in the Parliament House. Uh, so uh, we had today quite historic vote in the Parliament. Uh, Finland voted in favour of uh, submitting a membership application to NATO uh, by a vote of 188 to 8, if I remember the figures right. So this, is, this has been a very, very historical day for Finland, but I think it's very uh, good to be here today with you, because this is something that resonates with the values and interests of the cabinet as well, uh, what, what you do, and, and, and also the topics you've been discussing uh, throughout your, your programme here. So I'm very pleased to be here, and, and as I said, the minister sends you all, all his best regards. Uh, uh, the theme of, of the Univider Conference, the puzzle of peace, is, is very topical, as we all know. Uh, the events that have unfolded in, in Ukraine, Russia's aggression uh, to Ukraine, and its impact on the global order has made the topic of peace ever more urgent and current. And, and we are living in an era where the respect for human rights or democratic values and the very fundamental notion of the freedom from fear are being challenged to an unprecedented degree. And protracted violent conflicts, climate change, natural disasters and global pandemics have led to an increasing number of people living in fragile and, and conflict-affected countries. The, the, these, the, the number of people living in extreme poverty is rising, as well as the number of refugees and internationally, uh, sorry, internally displaced people. It's been estimated that 20% of the world's population live in fragile states, and by year 2030, over 80% of global poverty will be in countries suffering from violence and fragility. Tackling state fragility and, and placing emphasis on conflict prevention are ever more urgent. And even though, like here in Finland, we have 
talked about a lot about war uh, for obvious reasons. There's a war in Europe, uh, a war that has been started by our neighboring country. Uh, and we are talking about uh, joining the military alliance, but we have, haven't forgot, forgotten peace. Uh, this is why we do everything we do today, uh, trying to enhance security, but also talking about peace building and peace and conflict prevention. And it's at the very core uh, of Finland's government program as well. Uh, one of the main, main objectives uh, in strategic uh, goal of uh, globally active Finland is peace building. Uh, it states in the heading, Finland is building peace. And it means peace building throughout the conflict cycle, from preventing, pre preventive measures to, to reconstruction. And of course, uh, in the midst of the conflict, all, all, all those uh, measures needed. It, um, <clears throat> on top of this, um, the long-term effects of COVID-19 pandemic uh, uh, are not yet fully known. Uh, there's actually been a kind of a cluster of crises now happening uh, People were just uh, and still not haven't recovered fully. The, glo the global, uh, on the global scale, we still haven't recovered fully from the COVID. There's still, it's still, a, it's still a problem uh, in many countries. And, and on the top of that, uh, we, got, we got this new crisis in uh, Ukraine. And I have to say, always when we talk about the Ukraine uh, situation, it's uh, something that um, we want to remember that it's we have to keep our eyes on other. Con uh, conflicts are going on in different parts of the world as well. So even though it's, uh, of course, underst understandable that we living here in Europe are, of course, interested in what happens in Europe, but it doesn't mean that we, we are kind of uh, slipping off from our from other commitments to, to advance global peace and stability. So um, Finland wants to do its share in addressing these challenges. And in recent years, there has been a steady shift in our focus toward toward addressing fragility. Today we approach fragility through the triple nexus, uh, which we're talking a lot about nowadays, uh, also in the parliament. And it's, uh, it's a shared vision that puts into effect the synergies between uh, members of the humanitarian development and peace community. And I'm sure that you all, all know all, all, all about it. Furthermore, in 2020, this government uh, established uh, the Center for Peace Mediation at the Ministry for Foreign Affairs in order to enhance our efforts, our national efforts even more on this field. So dear friends, dear participants, um, Secretary General Antonio Guterres uh, recently remarked that war is becoming increasing complex, uh, increasingly complex and so is mediate, mediating peace. And I know that you have addressed in this conference a number of issues aiming at unpacking the increasing complexity of finding solutions to sustain, sustainable peace. Topics such as ethnicity, inequality and inclusion, or protest and social movements, or conflict legacies and post-conflict recovery are all parts of the puzzle of the piece. These panels and papers debated sound very interesting, and I wish I had the time to attend some of these sessions. But let me now add a note on Finland's efforts to address peace. Finland places a high priority on conflict prevention, mediation and peace building in our foreign policy, as stated. Uh, Finland aims to enhance the significance of conflict prevention and mediation in international organizations as well, including the UN, uh, the OSCE, and, and the African Union. We also promote a, a comprehensive role for the European Union in mediation and conflict prevention. Cooperation with civil society actors and the research community supports Finland's actions on this. Dialogue and mutual respect are essential elements in peace building, and without dialogue, there is little chance of resolving conflicts. Local ownership and understanding the context are key when the aim is peace. We can share our values and experiences, but we cannot force them on others as a condition for dialogue. Finland, uh, as a country, Finland ranks the number one in many international indexes. For instance, we have been the least fragile country in the world for many years according to the, the Fund for Peace Fragile States in Index. This has provided an opportunity to share our path from a poor conflict-ridden agriculture-based economy at the, at, at the turn of the 20th century to a postmodern industrial inform, information society. And actually one of those uh, recent rankings is the, the UN Happiness, uh, happiness Research Index or Happiness uh, Research where Finland uh, has now been declared as a, as a fifth uh, 
uh, as a f uh, happiest country in the world for the fifth time in a row. And I, I have to tell you, I was doing my public diplomacy work in London when, the first, when we were first time the officially happiest in the world. And I, I remember that we tried to do some social media posting on that. And, and some fi Finns were interestingly joining the conversation saying, what? This can't be true. Are other nations unhappier? Or like, how, how is this possible? Are we happier? But actually, uh, what they did when they um, did this research or uh, what kind of uh, uh, measures they did or what kind of um, uh, issues they took into account when, when defining what, what constitutes a happiness, a ha the state of happiness. It, it, it wasn't the happiness we feel, it was a happiness with, with kind of uh, is uh, something that uh, comes from society, stems from the society, that you feel secure, you, have, you do trust in your institutions, uh, your governmental or, or local institutions, uh, uh, there's a good education system and social uh, kind of welfare model networks, and that, that is, I think, that is the reason for the happiness. So it's not that we are all the time showing a happy face, it's just that we feel content to what, in what kind of society we live in. Uh, rule of law is something which is also very important to us uh, as a basis for peace and, and, and this is actually something that is now challenged also and also the international or uh, rule-based order uh, now, for example, with this Russian uh, invasion of Ukraine. Last year, the Ministry for Foreign Affairs uh, established a rule of law centre together with the University of Helsinki and the purpose of the centre is to connect expertise produce information and promote the development of the rule of law with different projects, uh, especially in developing countries. Finland places a high value on gender equality as well and inclusion in peace processes. Giving voice to marginalized and oppressed groups uh, and fostering uh, their having a say in decision-making processes that affect their lives are building blocks to a more sustainable future. And by, by saying that, I mean meaningful uh, uh, inclu inclusivity, meaningful participation in decision-making processes. Respect and dign dignity are also key components uh, of inclusion. We encourage uh, the implementation of UN Security Council resolutions 1325 on women, peace and security and 202050 on youth, peace and security. Uh, and I, I have to always say, say this in this context that we are the first country that uh, outlined our first uh, national action plan on youth, peace and security and we have been doing lots of a lot of outreach for different with different countries with, with our like-minded partner, partners and and with different other other partners who are looking at this sphere. So um, it's something that we would be in the future also interested in uh, cooperating uh, on, on or about. They are in integral parts of of the peace puzzle, which has been mentioned here, and and they need to be placed high uh, on the peace building agenda. We're also uh, of the view uh, that peace building, humanitarian aid and development cooperation, also known as the triple nexus, which have been mentioned here before, need to be coordinated uh, in a more comprehensive way that has been the case until now. Uh, I was actually uh, personally uh, leading the Parliamentary Committee on Crisis Management last year, and that was a cross-party committee, so there was uh, members of the parliament represented across the political spect spectrum, including the opposition parties. And everyone agreed on triple nexus, and, and uh, we wanted to also go deeper into what does it actually mean. And, and we were uh, discussing a lot that it have to have to include the planning stage of different operations or missions, uh, kind of having the kind of uh, common uh, understanding of what the, the security picture is uh, or the security environment and what kind of uh, measures are needed. And also throughout the conflict cycle, there should be kind of a good cooperation with the, between different stakeholders, be them humanitarian or development or, or military or civilian crisis management actors. And also, that, that also goes to the assessment of, the, of, of, of any mission or operation. How did it go? What are the lessons learned? So, and, and that's something that, that, that should be, um, I think, uh, looked in deeper, not only in Finland, but also together with our international partners. And I, I was just visiting New York a few weeks ago uh, in the UN peace building financing um, high-level meeting. And one, one, I actually was talking a lot about Triple Nexus there, and one reason was that I, I believe that Triple Nexus is something uh, that actually helps to also uh, to kind of contribute uh, or allocate the financing more effectively if all the different stakeholders are kind of contributing to, to the planning and, and having this common view as, as who is doing what, where, when, simple things. Sounds simple, it's not simple in real life, but actually um, the financing part is a very important part of it. 
Uh, an ex uh, example of a long-term perspective is our peace mediation uh, capacity building program with the African Union. Uh, we have actually a um, uh, quite new Africa, na uh, national Africa strategy in Finland. It was uh, uh, conducted last year and it's a government-wide strategy and it's looking at our political and trade and uh, uh, economic relations with African countries and African partners. So it's not development strategy. And one, one, one of the major themes there is uh, actually security and peace, peace and security and, and cooperation with African countries in that realm. Since 2009, uh, the program has supported African Union uh, peace mediation missions, trained peace mediators and produced manuals, established annual high-level peace mediators, retreats, and supported uh, FemWise Africa, the network of African women in mediation. And uh, I have to make a statement on this as well, um, on, on gender equality in, uh, in, in peace mediation. I think it, it needs deliberate choices and decisions also from any country, and we need more women on high-level peace mediating roles as well. And, and I think this is something that we have to do also by leading by example. And it does mean meaningful participation. It, it's not just that you have a seat um, you know, at the table if there's not tangible, real uh, possibility to actually have a voice or have an impact on, on, on the processes. Um, I, I wish to underline uh, that all this has been done in close collaboration and in the spirit of partnership uh, with our African Union colleagues. And, and to conclude, uh, dear friends, I, I gather that a uh, wider conference has deepened our understanding on the puzzle of peace, I hope and believe, and served as an excellent platform for knowledge exchange. Uh, your de deliberations are highly valued and welcome, and we need evidence-based research and facts to feed the policy-making processes. That's also something that this government has been very active on. There's uh, kind of a commitment part in our government program, and one commitment is to be in continuous dialogue and interaction with the scientific community and fact pay that kind of enhances our fact-based uh, policy making as well. And I'm sure that this conference has inspired participants to identify policy solutions to, to a common effort to achieve SDG 16, peace, justice and strong institutions. So I look forward uh, to seeing the, the results of your important work, finding its way to peace building policy and practice. And I'm sure that we all have a clearer understanding on, of how puzzle of peace is constructed and works in practice. And um, my, my final words say that we do have men uh, at the foreign ministry as well. I, had, I just heard that all the visitors from the from, um, Minister for Foreign Affairs or guests or uh, participants have been mainly women, but we do have men there as well, including my minister, who, <laughs> as I said, sends you warm regards. So now I have a couple of time for maybe one or two questions, and then, then I probably have to leave. But Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to address you this event. Great. So please, any of you who would like to engage the minister, be thinking of a question. I'm going to ask her one first, but you've touched on a lot of what I was going to ask you about. And that is, I think, the anxiety, not just in Africa, but in much of the developing world, that the industrialized north is now going to turn away from the global south. And it's, it's quite intense. You probably sensed it in New York yes. when you were there. And so if there's anything you'd like to add to your comments on that point, uh, uh, we'd, they'd be most welcome. That, that's actually a really good question, and I, I did sense that in New York. I had a chance to meet with uh, three uh, uh, UN ambassador, African UN ambassadors, um, ambassadors from Ghana and Djibouti, and also uh, ambassador of Ethiopia, and they all um, wanted to bring uh, out this concern of global justice. Also, because uh, some countries, for example, in the Horn of Africa, are now simultaneously suffering from uh, heavy drought, but also um, they have now. Uh, uh, they are running out of wheat supplies because m uh, most of the wheat, for example, uh, is coming from either Russia or Ukraine. So there's a food crisis in the making, and, and maybe it could be also said that it also already is there. It's already there. And if we now don't look at that, uh, the narrative that, for example, the Russia is uh, uh, spreading also on, on the African continent and elsewhere uh, might get more foothold. So I think we have to be very active in tackling this food crisis uh, and uh, to take our development commi commitments as serious as before and, and then also to think, uh, look at the strategic um, messaging what we, we are now 
so from so-called West, uh, you know, trying to, to put forward. And I, 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 my message was to the to the um, those ambassadors I had a chance to discuss with that this is not uh, the, the war in Ukraine. It's not about only about Ukraine. It's not only about Europe. It's a global global crisis because it already has an economic impact on so many countries. And, and the, uh, the, those ambassadors, I, I had a chance to discuss, they said that it, they agreed. Mm -hmm. it, it, they already see it in their, in their countries, the impacts of, of this. So I think we are all together in this. This is not only a European, European issue. And that's why it's ever more important that we, as I said, we t take our commitment seriously, which we have done before. One question from the floor, perhaps. Uh, who would like to, ah, there's a gentleman there down the aisle. And if you wouldn't mind when the microphone comes to you uh, to identify yourself, uh, that will be helpful. The microphone's coming to you right now. Yeah, my name is Daryl Sequeira. I'm an environmental ecologist. Um, I just have a very quick question. And one is that you've informed us that Finland um, respects the rule of law and equality. What I want to ask you is, does Finland achieve justice for all? I believe that we are a very rule, uh, rule of law based society. And also uh, we have a very uh, effective media as well, uh, which is always in the, the freedom of press rankings at the very top or high. And I, I think this kind of a watchdog uh, kind of a role that also the media is having uh, is very healthy. So I think there's, there's, the Finnish society is it's based on a kind of a transparency, I would say. And if there would be a problem, uh, then it, it usually it's, it's getting tracked quite quickly. And of course, in any society, there might emerge some problems or, or cases that you have to look more into details. That is, has, have we really been you know, on the path of rule of law? And that's why this kind of, we need this kind of Feedbacks, feedback loops <laughs> from, from different institutions. So uh, I, I believe that we are, we are in a good place in that. Great. Well, thank you very much. The minister has an onward engagement, and we have to get her off to that. Uh, I'd like to thank her very warmly for having joined us here. One of your colleagues in the foreign ministry is going to join <laughs> us on the next panel. So the ministry has been very well represented throughout our conference. We're really grateful to you for coming today, speaking openly about sensitive issues and addressing straight on the questions everybody has on their minds. That's typically Finnish. So yeah. thank you very much. We don't know much. any other way. <laughs> thank you.